Monday, September 28th. That's the day. This is this is the date of my anniversary with Ashley. <laughs> Just a little, little bit of fun fact for you. <laughs> Mil <laughs> military personnel stationed in al stationed along East Coast to prevent immigrants flooding in from Atlantic, from the Atlantic. Mm. Werewolves representatives push the ministry for more um, accessible set accessible set sedative. Doctor from Salak Salach Salak Town arrested for exper experimenting with child cloning. Oh my gosh. The news is getting more and more intense. Are you sure that would be okay? Yes! I mean, it would be really hard to pull off. But it's something that will make the story different. Different isn't always good. It's a neat concept, but you need to handle it carefully. And gracefully. I know. Well, actually, I haven't read the new- uh, haven't read the new stories. I always forget. Uh, okay, so I read that one. Okay. Cyber Cyberpunk Love Hotel. Room service. Get this order, order to room 512. The order came around 10.30. I was doing nothing, or in other words, I was waiting for an order to come. I was tasked to take a bottle of wine and a couple of packs of condoms. Yes, sometimes guests really do ask for things like this. Talk about being unprepared. Unprepared. The person in charge that, that night gave me the, the requested items and let me deliver out of the room to deliver out of the room to deliver them. Oh, sorry, and let me out of the room to deliver them. I don't know where, the, where I came up, where that came from. From there, I went to the lobby and waited for the elevator to arrive. While I was waiting, a guest came in behind me and pressed the button to call the elevator. He looked at me in a wall. I looked back at him, showing him a smile, a smile hotel management taught me. Shush. <laughs> and showing him the smile how to hotel manager uh, taught me. He smiled back. When we got in when we got in the elevator, he pushed to the button on the third floor for the third floor. Silence filled the tiny room as we ascended. The guest pulled his phone out from it from his pocket instead um, and started recording me. This again, I thought. I didn't do anything about it, to be precise. I can't do anything about it. It's part of the job after all. Ding. We reached the, we reached the third, third floor. The guest left while still pointing his camera at me. At me, at me, at me. I waited alone until the elevator reached the fifth floor a few seconds later. I left the elevator and started moving towards room 512. When I was in the front of the door, when I was in front of the door, the, I rang the bell and let the occupants know I arrived. It's here. Oh, it's here! I can hear um, the muffled voice of a woman. Oops, the door opened. Look, hun, they really do use a robot to, live, to deliver room service. Oh. The woman shouted back at her partner. Haha, <laughs> that is so cool. The guy responded, trying to sound interested, though I'm sure he was starting, staring at the woman's butt <laughs> and couldn't wait to use the stuff they'd ordered. I want to take a picture with the robot, okay? The woman said um, in a sat saturin? A uh, sweet, mildly nauseating tone. Sure, hun. Wait, are you sure it's okay to just hug the robot like that? Uh huh, huh. Turned out to be. Turned out the man could still think with his big brain after all. <laughs> it's fine. I, I saw that they even have a robot you can have sex with. I'm sure a simple hug won't matter. So said the woman. That's a that's a different model. That's a different model. What's next? Are you going to hug a Terminator? I screamed internally. Say cheese then. Say cheese then. One, two, three. Flash. It looks so cute. I was hoping it might look a bit more human-like, though. Maybe they don't have the technology for that yet," said the adult woman, who still hadn't grasped the concept of "look but don't touch." Come, on, okay, come on, okay, come on, darling. This robot has uh, got other things to take, uh, got other things to do. Let's just take our order and let it, uh, let and let it do its work. They took their order and closed the door. Oh, humans! How the hell did your people manage to survive for, for so long in this universe? I wondered as I trundled back down to my, uh, trundled back down to my room. Interesting. The inner thoughts of a, of a robot. Uh, the anxious boy and his love stories on public transport. Oh. The day was hot, sunny, and humid, just like most days in Jakarta. I was standing outside a crowded bus, neither well functioning, uh, neither well functioning air conditioning nor proper proper ventilation, trying to keep myself productive in the uncomfortable in, uncomfortable environment by reading the recently uh, bought copy of Madoka Harukami. Kami's The Elephant Vanishes while listening to a random uh, playlist on my old on my old iPod. Despite the hellish conditions, you could say I was uh, I was luckier than most because I was standing near the rear door of the bus, leaning on my back leaning my back on the side of the seat, safely enough not to fall out of the bus, breezy enough uh, breezy enough to breathe freely. 
as mentioned, I was on, on the public bus in Jakarta, so naturally I needed to to be wary of my surroundings, mostly keeping my belongings secure from pickpockets and other whoops, and other human pests. I glanced around the bus several times in between pages, and that was when I saw her. It's hard to it's hard to describe her. She has no specific characteristics to differentiate from her from other women. She was like the perfect example of the girl of the girl you walk past, um, unseen on the sidewalk every every day. A girl you might glance at for a second, then a few steps later it would be hard enough it would be hard even to remember her hair colour. Never mind what her eyes, her nose, her mouth looked like. She was standing near the, the front door on the bus of the bus, not leaning on anything or anyone, not touching the bacteria infest, infected <laughs> infested hand hand grip on the ceiling of the bus. Although to be fair to be fair it might um have been hard for her to reach that grip anyway. But still she stood there with a perfect balance of a tree rooted in in healthy soil. She stood as, uh, as if someone put the, had silently put the Venus de Milo on the bus and she somehow fit perfectly without anyone noticing it happened. Noticing it happen. Happening. Oops. Okay, there we go. She was wearing a pair of earphones wired, just like headphones were supposed to be, and a slight smile on her face. Sometimes she closed her eyes for a few moments, enjoying the music only she could hear. Her eyes rarely stayed in one place, they kept wandering around the bus, not too fast, like someone, someone anxious. Not too slow, like someone looking at, a, at something specific. Maybe she's the one, I thought. This isn't the first time I thought, I thought, like, that, I thought like this had crossed my mind. As a hopeless romantic, seeing any woman who piques my interest will immediately trigger a story in my, in my imagination. A story of how, how I'll approach them, get to know them, with the provi proviso? Proviso? Provi provision, proviso? Proviso? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. With the prov proviso, proviso that I'll that they're just as um they're just, that they're just as i imagine them to be start dating get married have kids grow old in our home and so on and so on random cuties um random cuties that's what i call them unicorns among horses the term doesn't apply to any the, the term doesn't apply to any cute girls i see of course it has to be someone special or at least someone i imagine to be special the thing is autom the thing is automatically imagining those stories whenever i happen to come across a random cutie isn't healthy it puts my toll on it's put it puts a toll on my mind and of course my heart. It creates a lot of unhealthy expectations before any opportunity even arises. Oh, she looked at me. There we go. We made eye contact for for a brief flash of a second. I immediately returned to my book. Did she notice me staring at her? Did she see what was happening? What I was? What, did she see what I was thinking? My mind went stop spinning, overthinking, overthinking while my my while my pulse beats, double time in my in my ears. I continue staring at my book. With what just happened, I obviously can't uh, can't read it properly. My eyes were looking at the world, but nothing was being processed other than the thoughts of her. I glanced back at her, and she was staring at me. I contact more than once. I contact more than once. It, it has to mean something. Should I? Oh my gosh. Should I approach her and introduce myself? Yes. Yes, I should. But what if things go wrong? What's the worst thing that could happen if we introduce ourselves? First, it's a crowded bus, and moving from the rear door to the front wall will definitely annoy some people. Second, what if, uh, after we uh, after we approach her, she becomes annoyed and, uh, oh come on, you're overthinking, as usual. Nothing bad will happen even if she does even if she does get annoyed. Don't dismiss me. Nothing bad will happen. Well, she might scream and, and say I'm a pervert, and then the whole bus will beat me to death. Oh, the all the oh, and the worst option. What if we introduce ourselves, and then it turns out she's not like we imagined her to all imagined her to be. All that time and energy will be wasted in exchange for years of agony. Oh, for everything, everything will be fine. Don't worry so much. No matter what happens second, we'll, we, we still have to try something first. No, no, there's too much a risk. The debate is still raging inside my head, and that's, and that's when it happens. We make eye contact again, but this time, this time it lasts longer than a few seconds. And then she smiled at me. Just a small curve on the perfect average with beautiful lips. I return to my book. See, you have to do something. But remember the girl with the violin we saw in the train at yoga, to Yogakata a few years ago? Of course I remember. Exactly, she was just a random person that sat across from, from you from the train. We don't even remember what month it was, and yet we still remember the maroon coat she was wearing, the violin case she put in, put in the overhead compartment, her reddish hair and that pixie cut, her... Stop it, that was, that was different. We, ha we, might have the we might have saved ourselves over a lot of embarrassment by not talking to her. The thoughts, the noise, the internal dialogue, it won't stop. I was sweating, but not 
um, because of the heat. A cold sweat. This had to stop. Stop! I screamed internally. Everything stopped, and just in time, my old iPod randomly shuffled two explosions in the spaces. Only the moment we, 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 uh, the moment we are, we were alone. The moment we were alone. I cranked, I cranked up the volume, put my book back, book in my bag, and just breathed. Yes, I might lose the chance to meet the one, the one by doing this, but at least she, um, but at least as long as I don't know her, she's perfect. As far as I know, she might be listening to explosions in, in space, in the space. As far as I know, she might be, be a big fan of, um, Harukami, and Final, and Final Dreams, in Final Dreams 4. Wait, sorry, in Final Dreams 9. I don't know why I thought, why I thought that was 4. Final Dreams 9. As far as I know, she might be single. As far as I know, she might be the 100% perfect match for me. That I, be that I believe can't exist if my knowledge, if my knowledge of her goes any farther down, farther than what I know right now. Besides the old saying goes, if it's meant to be, it will be. The bus stopped in front of Plaza Sanayan, my destination. It was time for me to go. I decided not to look in her direction as I left, knowing that if I looked at her, it would be the last time I ever saw her. That's too hard for a hopeless romantic like me. I left the bus and enjoyed the warm sun and the breeze of fresh air. Finally out of that metal, metal sh Schrodinger's box. That's what... That's when it happened. I turned my head to the right, and there she was, standing alone, enjoying the breeze. Now she was through that roasting metal box we humans named a bus. Named a bus. She turned her head to the left, showing a glimmer of surprise at seeing me standing there. After that, she smiled. So if it's meant to be, so if it's meant to be, it will be. Longest story ever. <laughs> Longest short story ever. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I, can't, I almost kind of forgot what they were talking about now. Different isn't always good, it's a neat concept, but you'll need to handle it carefully and gracefully. I know. Someone's coming in. Oh, Gala! Hey, Gala. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Gala. Am I interrupting? It looks like you were having an intense discussion. It's nothing. Lena was just giving me feedback. It's for the book I'm writing. Sounds like a heavy discussion. What are you up to tonight? I'm just planning to sit and relax. Please don't let my pre presence interrupt you. Oh, don't worry about it. Although I need to interrupt Lena for a moment. Sure, how can I help you? Can I have a cup of... Hmm. You remember my remedy? Of course. Do you want to give it a try again? My last order didn't quite hit the spot. Remember, it's tea and ginger. The last thing is definitely a different ingredient from either of those. Okay. Remember, it, it has tea and ginger. Yeah, I remember. That's a what if, I, what if I did tea, milk, and then ginger? Is that a bit different? Galahad. <laughs> Galahad. Judging from the smell, this looks like this looks like it. Indeed. I have the same feeling. I've made a note of that mixture. Perfect. It's also called the Galahad. Anyway, please don't mind me and continue with your discussion. Don't worry, Mr. Gala. We're done for the night. We're done for the night. <laughs> You're done. I have a uh, I have a lot of new homework thanks to you. You're welcome. Is Hyde coming? No, I'm by myself tonight. It's gonna be gonna be a peaceful night then. That's me and Fire. Oh come on, I was just joking. He needs to learn how to communicate his thoughts nicely though. He might he might not look like it. But he's a very kind person, you know. He doesn't show it, that's for sure. That applies to you as well. Oh, come on! Oh, Bailey's. Good evening, everyone. I can't remember what the voice I gave Bailey's was. If, I, if, if anything. If I gave him anything. Welcome, Mr. Bailey's. Hiya. How are you doing, Freya? Not good. What's going on? Lena was just criticizing my story. It's cold feedback. It's cruel. It's, nece it's necessary. Sounds interesting. What's the problem with the story? The story is non-linear and quite complicated. Imagine a choosing your own adventure storybook, but for adults. Sounds pretty common, so far. But instead of telling you which page to turn to, each decision you make will give you a score. What? The score will determine which page you should go to. That sounds more like a video game than a book. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's not, it's not that original. My target, uh, but my target here is the mainstream audience, huh? With the help of my publisher, 
this kind of book may go mainstream. Just like, uh, just like that choose your own adventure show on Netstream. It was nothing new, but because of the marketing and the names involved, it re re it reached the mainstream. <laughs> It reached the mainstream market. That sounds interesting and highly ambitious, Freya. At least it's simpler than my other idea, which is making the novel not from not in the form of a book, but in the form of story cards. What? I know, right? As if she has all the time in the world. It's as if she, <laughs> as if she has all the time in the world. And that's before even considering the sensitive issue of setting the story in a world where only humans exist. What did you say? No, there's a reason why it has to be that way. Just wait until I finished, okay? Alright, alright. As Luna said though, we won't have time. Getting a normal pitch approved uh, getting a normal pitch approved is already a steep climb. Let's not make a mountain even higher. Fair enough. What's the story all about any uh whoops. Uh what's the story all about, by the way? You have to wait for it. Don't want to spoil the fun. If you say so. Anyway, I haven't ordered anything. What do you want to drink tonight? Ginger latte, if you know how to make it. Haha, -ha, lucky I did learn. But I've learned. <laughs> ginger latte, tea, oh no, coffee. Coffee, ginger and milk. Coffee, ginger, milk. Coffee, ginger, milk. Awesome. Here you go. Thanks. Damn, this is good. With this kind of drink making seal, I want I wonder why your pieces isn't any bigger. Your place isn't any bigger. What we have uh, here now is more than enough for me. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess. By the way, how are you doing, Baileys? Mm, that's Freya. By the way, how are you doing, Baileys? Still busy with your last client? Oh, I'm done with her. Done? As in you're dropping the project? Hey, I'm not crazy. I still need the money. Done as in I finished the job. I spent the past few days making sure. It's even done before the deadline. It's even done before the deadline. Did she like it? Oh, she loved it. She had some complaints, of course, but I convinced her. <laughs> by using some design terms she doesn't understand. <laughs> so you finished the job by bull****ing her? <laughs> the finest bull****, my lady. <laughs> That's one survival school for every freelancer must have. Are you working on anything right now? No. I'm taking a break from work. I need to work on a few personal matters. Oh. Mm, like you and Lua? Something like that. By the way, I'm curious. How did you guys meet? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind. It's just that I was young and stupid, you know. Oh, come on. Who hasn't been there? You're right. So, I was a bit of a player back in college. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> And I was going after uh, my then best friend's girlfriend. Oh, and I was going after my then best friend, my then best friend's girlfriend, friend, girlfriend's friend. Wait, <laughs> I can't can't even say it right. It's so confusing. And and I was going after then my then best friend's girlfriend's friend. Wait, what? Okay, I'll say it slowly. I used to have a best friend. He was an incubus. Okay, let's call him co cognac. Let's call him cognac. Cognac. Kanye has a girlfriend. Still following. And that girl has a friend. <laughs> the friend is the one I'm after. Oh, okay. Got it. She was the one who she was one of the hottest girls there. But everyone knew she wasn't the type of girl who you'd would you'd want to date. Why? It's I don't want to get into the details, but this isn't this succubus was super hot. And all the guys wanted to sleep with her. She was a player too. Huh? That doesn't sound like Lua at all. Because it wasn't Lua, do genius. Huh? Lua was my friend's girl. Ah, oh, Lua was my friend's girl. Holy moly. This is getting spicier. The other girl's name was... Let's just call her Rose. Continue. I knew Lua, I knew Lua thanks to her relationship with, her, with, with Cognac. Uh, that's a fake name you made up, right? Yes. <laughs> Net, yes. Now will you let me continue without interruptions? <laughs> okay, okay. So I asked Laura a lot of questions about Rose. She knew she knew what I was after. It annoyed her so much, but I kept on bothering her. I mean, I was pretty, 
uh, active guy back then. So Lua came over to visit us at one point. Uh, I lived in college with Cognac. I, I lived with Cognac back in Cognac back in college. Oh my gosh, what was that so difficult to say? I'd been out and I and I got back just as Laura arrived. A total coincidence. We went into our place together and witnessed something surprising. <gasps> they were cheating. Cognac was sleeping with Rose. Holy mother of Molly! I saw the look on Lua's face, the disbelief, anger, sad, anger, sadness, and without even thinking about it, I punched Cognac in the face. We what? I got sorry. Uh, it was so much to process. I think I've lost my mind. I got into I got into a fight with him. Oh, I haven't told you. Cognac was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu <laughs> jiu jitsu tutor for the kids. He was pretty good. Oh my! So he lost the fight. Yeah, I landed that one punch, and he beat me to a pulp. Easily, easily. Lua begged me to stop fighting on her behalf. Huh? <laughs> More like she begged Cognac. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I lost, but I don't give up so easily. I was pretty, I was beaten pretty badly. So Lua took care of my injuries. We grew, we grew, we grew, oh my gosh, we grew closer after that. And I don't even remember the exact date, but suddenly the friendship turned into a relationship. That was one hell of a story. I know. <sighs> Have you seen her by any chance? Mm. Yeah. Lua came by a few days ago. How is she doing? She hasn't returned any of my calls or texts. Well, she's healthy, that's for sure. She got into an argument, though. With whom? There was this male model. A model? I didn't think she was that type of girl. I didn't think she was the type of girl to go out with a model. Oh, they weren't together. What were they argue arguing about? Well, we were talking about your relationship. Lua told us about the reason behind the fight. About your family stuff. And then this guy, Hyde, joined the conversation. I joined the discussion. What did he say? He didn't understand why Lua would um, insist on getting family approval. Considering, you know, what? You're willing to leave your own family. You would do that for her? Yes, I would. I'm sick and tired of my family. Why would you say that? Let me tell you about my family. Or I should say, most Elven families. They all think that they're so high and mighty. If you're born enough, they're, they're, they are certain to f uh. If you're born enough, there are certain unwritten rules you must follow. Reputation and appearance are everything. We must never, ever make our family look bad. You can only befriend certain people. You must dress a certain way. You can only have certain jobs. Certain jobs. Jobs that are deemed worthy and successful. Like being a doctor or a lawyer or a CEO. You know? Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be an artist. I, I love drawing and creating art. However, becoming an artist is not something um, elves would deem, would deem suitable. Unless you, become a, unless you become the next Da Vinci. So when I switched from a business major to an art major, my parents went, went crazy, screamed like they were on fire. They told me that I'd, I'd never be rich or successful. All that because you chose an art degree? You want to know the worst part? They blamed Lua. What do you mean? They blamed her for my decision to pursue my pa passion for art. Yelled, a, yelled about her, about how her kind is ruin ruining the country. Accusing their religion of worshipping the Dark Lord. Accusing her of putting a spell on me and cursing the family. Whoa. I mean, come on, this is the 21st century. That's so not cool. I don't want to sound judgmental, but your family is racist. Tell me about it. Hmm. Lua's the only person that can make me feel alive. Hmm. She showed me how to be free and, I and pursue my dreams. I don't understand why Lua was so obsessed with the idea of reconciliation with my family. I just don't get it. I have no problem leaving my family, you know. I would happily leave them for the both of us. What about her? Oh, Gala. He's come and laying down the facts now. What about her and her family? You may be happy to leave your family. However, it may not be the same for her. I... Gala, do you have something to say? Perhaps you could give us a different perspective. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I couldn't help but overhearing your story. I assume that the person you're talking about is not enough. I is not enough, correct? Yes, she's a succubus. I see. Hmm. I'm a werewolf. For werewolves, the wolf pack is the most important thing. We'll put our family before any other. We often have our own problems with the, within the pack, but we won't. But we won't abandon our family or anything. Perhaps that's also true for her and her family. Besides, if you leave, besides if you leave your family for her, wouldn't that make your parents? Wouldn't that make your parents believe that all those bad, all those bad stereotypes about Sakipai are true? 
I I never thought of it that way. Whether you like it or not, your actions will, will have an impact on her as well. And if you leave your family for her, that will put her in a difficult spot. She might feel responsible for your actions. There's nothing to feel bad about. I'm leaving my messy family to create a better life uh, to create a better one with her. It's easier for you to say that now, but you don't know what the future holds. One day circumstances might change. Or he he doesn't like that. One day one of you uh one day one of you might regret your decision. One day you might use the I left my family for you card. But we we, we love each other. I'll be with her whatever the circumstances may be. You know, love is like a flame. It might burn fiercely at first, but over time it will die down if you don't maintain it. Maintaining it won't be easy. It will be hard work, because life, life is full of storms. And marriage, hmm, and marriage, it will not survive the lo on love alone. Damn, Gala is so deep. <laughs> Giant, wise fairy bear. <laughs> Whoa, that's deep. We'll have each other, and that's enough for us. Tell me, do you have any? Do you have health insurance? What? I'm an elf. Why would I need health insurance? Health insurance. You will need some. What for? Immort immortality is an elven privilege. But you'll lose it if your family disowns you. I've seen people go bankrupt because I fell ill, or because I fell ill or got seriously injured. Emptied their entire life savings for an eight-dollar pill because in this country they charge twenty thousand dollars for it. And if you decide to have children, they won't have the same privilege as you do. There's a high prob probability that they'll be bullied for being half-breed. There are consequences. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be taken lightly. Think about it. Anyway, I've got to go. I apologize for my intrusion. No, thank you for your insight. I've got to go too. Want to head out together? Sure. Are they best buds? Thanks for the drink, Lena. And Freya. Bye. We're all helping each other. Building friendships. What? You made me. <laughs> you made me lose two customers in a minute. Hey, that wasn't on me. They were leaving anyway. Are you going to write a, write that in your book? It's a secret. If your book is based on this coffee shop, how can you present a story like theirs in a world where, with only humans around? I'm not sure. Perhaps I'll. Perhaps a hot drink will give you some inspiration. Sounds like a great idea. Is that the end of the night? Lemonthal. Sour and cool with a with a hint of home. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this episode right here. Thank you for watching everyone. Uh, let me know how you what you think of the series. Um, and tell me who your favorite character is. Thanks so much.